Hey guys, in this episode, we're setting up basic two bone IK on our player's hand. So before, his hand goes right through that pillar. And after, just gently blow drying his hair, but his arm is not actually going through the pillar. Let's get to it. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and today we're setting up a very basic, the most basic inverse kinematics two-bone IK for our player's right hand. And if you're unfamiliar with the term inverse kinematics, often abbreviated IK, basically it's animation based on whatever the player or character is pushing up against. So typically animation is handled from the root bone, which is like a pelvis, and then out to the spine, and then out to the arm, and then the arm's doing its thing. But in the case of IK, the arm or the leg is hitting something and needs to be adjusted backwards up the bone chain based on the object that's being hit. So from the hand to the forearm to the upper arm, etc. And within Unreal Engine, there's a couple different ways of doing this. And I'm just going to show you the simplest possible way today. And there are some drawbacks to this. So I'd be very interested at the end of the episode if you have any better ways of doing this, seeing what they are. So here are our key concepts for this episode. Based on a sphere collision around our player's hand, we're going to identify whether the hand is actually hitting something. And anytime a part of our character is outside their collision capsule, that's when we need to apply this. And then based on whether we get a collision, that's when we're going to turn on our two bone IK. And we're going to do that directly with a node in our anim graph. So let's get to it. So in our last episode, we set up our very first gameplay ability, not yet integrated with a greater gameplay ability system, but we'll get to that. But in that gameplay ability, the player has the ability to press a number on their keyboard and they raise their hand and it creates a fire in the top of their hand, basically a human torch. And the inevitable problem with that is that it places our player's hand outside of the collision capsule. Anytime you got anything going outside the collision capsule, you need to have some sort of collision so that it doesn't just go straight through objects. So basically this build is gonna be two parts. One, it's gonna do a collision check to see is the hand going through something and then two how do we adjust the hand and that's where the two bone IK comes in and so to start we need to navigate to our character's animation blueprint so I've got mine under my core folder but you can navigate to yours wherever it is and over in our event graph, this is the default setup. We've already set up a little bit here with jumping into water and things like that. But what we need to be able to do is we need to assess in real time, okay, is the player's arm held up? And you could do this for anything, really. For example, if they've got a sword that's sticking out or something else. But in our cases, is our player's arm being held up? And because we need to do this in real time, really, it needs to be evaluated every single tick. And so from last episode, we already have a variable, right arm holding up. And that's exactly what we're going to assess get right arm holding up. And to assess it every single tick, we're building off of this event blueprint update animation. So I can just hit the plus sign here to add a pin, and then I can drag that down and create a branch node. And we can connect the right arm holding up to the condition there. Because if we're not holding up the arm, we don't need to do anything in that case. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a sphere trace around the character's hand. So I'm going to drag out a pin, if this is true, and we're going to do a sphere trace by channel. And where's the sphere trace taking place? It's around the hand. So in our last episode, we set up a socket on the player's hand so we can coordinate the sphere trace right around that socket. And so to get the location of our socket, I just need to go to references here, drag in the reference to our character. And really what we're doing is we're getting a reference to the mesh. So I can say get mesh. And then from the mesh, we can get socket location. And the socket name that we set up last episode is hand underscore r socket. I'm just going to turn off the debug here just so we don't get that annoying overlap. All right, so we got our socket location. So the start is going to be this. And I thought about creating another socket at the elbow and then doing a sphere trace from the hand to the elbow. That might actually make sense. But like I said, we're keeping this really simple. So we're actually going to keep the start and the end location exactly the same. And all we're going to do is have a radius of 20. So basically 20 units around the hand, 20 centimeters around the hand in any direction. If that's true, if it gets a hit, then we're gonna do the two bone IK. So if I navigate over and then I can do a branch off of this return value. And so now I'm gonna use an additional variable in order to set something in our anim graph. So we're gonna create a Boolean variable here because this is going to set that variable if we get a hit. And that means that right around our hand, there's something there that requires our hand to move. So I'll select a plus sign here and we're gonna call this variable right arm adjust position. And then I can drag in a reference to that variable. We're actually going to need two references because if it's true, then I'm going to say yes. And then I can copy that, paste it below. And if it's false, I can set it to no. The other thing I'm going to do here just temporarily, just for troubleshooting, is I'm going to do a print string right after. In that print string, I'm going to say right arm adjust position, if I could spell that correctly. And then I'll paste that print string. We'll do a second one and we'll say right arm back to normal. 
All right, so just to quickly trace through this logic. So if the right arm is being held out or held up, then this is true, then every single tick, every single tick, we are doing this sphere trace by channel. But because that sphere trace isn't really going anywhere, it's just a very small sphere trace around the hand, it's not too performance intensive. And then if it gets a hit from trace channel visibility, then it's setting this variable. And this variable is gonna be referenced in our walk run state. Now, if you don't have this open, if you go over to your anim graph here, then you need to go into the locomotion state machine. We have our idle state and our walk run state, and we're actually gonna to need to update both, but let's go into our idle to start. And we set these up last episode with the holding up. Basically, we were adjusting a bone position if that ability was true. And so now I'm just gonna expand this out, make some space. So we're gonna drag out a pin from here, and we're gonna do a two bone IK node. So what is two bone IK? So it's basically a way of doing inverse kinematics in a two bone chain. So it's the most basic chain you can think of. So it's saying at the first bone, whatever that location is, it could be the foot as well, but in this case, it's gonna be our hand. Do we get a hit? And then if we get a hit, what are the bones that we need to adjust? So we need to set an effector joint and that's gonna be our elbow because that's what's actually moving and bending. And then we have a joint target location, which is in this two bone chain, when it's turned on, when we detect a collision, we have to move where do we want to move to? So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to set our IK bone. So this is referencing our player's skeleton. And the bone that's going to be adjusted is our right hand. So I can scroll down here until I get to the hand underscore R. And there's some settings here like allow stretching. In general, you don't want to do that because you don't want to have bones be all stretched out. And I had to play around with these settings a lot to get a decent effect. But our effector location, this is actually going to be bone space. And our effector target is going to be our right elbow. So I'll scroll down, look for the right, and it's our actually lower arm right. Now our joint target. So I experimented with this as well. And what I found works the best, at least for just a single node, the simplest possible two bone IK, was to set this joint target to be my left foot, which is basically the joint that's furthest from where we're moving. And I don't fully understand how this is working, but basically the way I'm thinking about it is that the elbow, the effector joint, that's what's moving towards the location. And so if it's moving towards the left side of our body, the arm is inevitably gonna be kind of pulled down and back. So the joint target location, I'm gonna switch this also to bone space. And for the joint target, I'm gonna select our left foot. So if I scroll down here and we're gonna select thigh L and then down to foot L. Now we need to tell this node when we're actually going to turn it on. And we're not using alpha in this case. So alpha is like, do you wanna turn this on a scale from zero to one? So you could turn it on 10%, 20%, et cetera. And sometimes that's really useful to have an effect on an animation be like 20% on, 30% on, depending on the situation. Cause you can blend multiple animations that way. But in this case, it's just gonna be on or off. And so instead of alpha here, I've gotta change it from alpha input type float value to bool value. And then we get a Boolean over here. And so the Boolean, in order for this to be turned on, the right arm needs to be held up and we have a second variable, our right arm adjust position. So I can drag that in. So it has to be this and, I can do an and Boolean, connect this up and connect it up here. So if both of these things are true, so if the right arm is being held up and right arm adjust position is true because there was a collision around the hand, then this is gonna be true and then it's gonna adjust the location of the two bones. Basically the hand R and the effector, which is the lower arm R. And it's gonna do that based on the joint target, which is our foot L. The last thing I'm gonna do here is down towards the bottom under blend settings. I'm not gonna make this be zero seconds blend in and blend out, because then it's like uh, instantaneous, the arm moves into position. In general, I set these to be pretty fast blending, but not instantaneous. So I would say something like 0.1 seconds. So let's try this out now. Now, because we have the print string, as soon as I hit the number one to activate our ability, so it's printing those on the left-hand side there, but let's see when I get close to the pillar, right arm back to normal, right arm adjust position, and there it is. So our arm is not going through the pillar. Our arm is, yeah, it's a little bent though, right? Our elbow's kind of coming in this way because the elbow is being pulled down toward our left foot. And so let me show you how we can fix that. That's not necessarily a bad thing. And actually I'm kind of avoiding the flaming face effect that you saw in the intro. But if I wanted to change that a little bit, there's a couple of things that we could do and I'll show you both. So the first is instead of being pulled directly into our left foot, we could adjust that location so it's slightly staggered relative to our foot. So maybe I wanna move that out a little bit. So if we change our X to be about negative 300, that's actually further out this way. And I found that works well, so let me show you. All right, so our arm's up, and now let's try it. So there it is being pulled in. Yep, yeah, it looks a little bit more natural, right? And if I pull it in more, more, a little bit, yep, yeah, that looks pretty good. 
but you might run into this issue right here. I call it the spasming hand effect. And the reason this is occurring, so if we go back to our anim graph and actually go back to the event graph here, so what's happening here is that in that 0.1 seconds, our location of the hands being adjusted, and then it's assessing this again. And after the adjustment, it's saying, oh, sphere trace around, I'm not hitting anything, so we're good. So it then unselects right arm adjust position, and then it starts blending immediately back to its normal position. Then it does another sphere trace by channel, and it does hit. So it hits and then unhits, hits and then unhits. So it's a spasming effect that'll just keep going and going indefinitely. But there's a really easy way to fix that. And that is all we need to do is assess whether or not our player's actually moving at that moment in time. And if they're not moving, then we don't even need to do this fear trace by channel because we only need to do this again. Basically, we only need to assess whether our player's hand position needs to change if our player actually moves. And so the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to select all these nodes. I'll drag them out just a little bit. So make some space between right arm holding up and the branch and all of this. And then under our essential movement data, I'm going to get our velocity variable, drag that in, and then I'll drag out a pin from velocity. And if we search for vector length, so we can get the length of our velocity vector. And if that's zero, then we don't need to do anything. So I can drag out from the float here and I can say if it's greater than zero, got to make some more space here. If it's greater than zero branch and only if it's greater than zero. So only if that's true, then do this. Because if the player is not moving, if velocity is zero, then it doesn't need to do a thing. And it just keeps whatever status it's got. So compile, save, let's test this out. So no more spasming. So if the hand can be fully extended like this, great. And then if not, yep, then it adjusts. Now, the last thing we got to do is we got to set this up in walking and running as well, because we got this for our idle state, but we don't have it for walking and running. So what I can do is I can just copy all of this stuff, control C, come over to our walk run state, drag this out, control V paste, move that into position and connect it up. Same thing with this one, compile, save. So now we got the hand adjusting when we're running, when we're moving. Yep, it's adjusting in all those cases. The last thing I'm going to do is under the event graph, I'm just going to delete out these print strings. You could also collapse all of this to a function. I think I'll probably keep it as is and I'll just comment it. So I'll just highlight the whole thing, control C, assesses whether right hand is hitting object. And if so, does simple two bone IK. Now to fix the whole flamethrower in the face sort of thing, what you could do is you could just elaborate on this two bone IK, meaning you could also adjust, for example, the hand position. So instead of the hand doing this, where it's kind of curved inward, you could then just curve it outward and the fire would then be playing here. And I'll probably end up doing something like that. I'll probably end up tweaking this just a bit, but I wanted to show you the very basics so you can get started on this. You could experiment with it. And let me know in the comments below if you come up with something that's better. So that concludes our episode for today. But in our next episode, we're finally getting into animations in earnest. I'm going to show you how to get animations from my favorite site for free animation content, which is Mixamo. We're going to bring those right into UE5. And then I'm going to show you how to map those to our UE5 mannequin perfectly. Maybe sprinkle in some fire. No, what am I talking about? We already did fire. That was last episode. So I hope to see you there.